Greetings, this is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. So far to date, we've been able to set up our invoice sheet. We've also set up our product sheet, our client sheet, our sales sheet, and we have our statement up and running. Now, I haven't put the PDF code, or showed you the PDF code to run for that, uh, but I've put it up on the website. If you go to the website, you'll find the code is set up there. And in a previous tutorial, I mentioned there was a caveat because of the varying sizes of the data set in the statement. Well, I've fixed that up by putting in a named range that's created. So now whenever you create different data sets here, the PDF and the print area will automatically adjust to suit that. That code is up on the website. I won't go back over it in this particular tutorial. Very similar to the code for printing the PDFs in our invoice sheet here. Now what we want to do in this tutorial is have a look at this interface sheet. How are we going to set up a nice interface so that when we come along to our application, we'll be able to view the key elements and also be flagged very quickly if there's a problem with regard to any of our stock or inventory or invoices. Well, here's some ideas that I have. This is what I've put together. You might want to do something different or even take some of these ideas and modify them to suit yourself. So I'll take you through what I've done and you can decide whether or not this would be suitable for you. We'll just unprotect all our worksheets, which we've done now. And we're going to show you from left to right, we have our chart, which is the totals chart for all sold. That's an advanced filter that runs here. Here is the criteria headers and the criteria for this advanced filter. Here are the headers for it here and down into there. That's the area for this advanced filter. The pie chart in the center, this pie chart here, just simply runs off three formulas that look up values. Now I'll show you the, uh, I'll unhide the ribbon and I'll show you the formula bar so you can see those values. So when we go into here, we see it's count if action. And action is a named range that's created every time, every time that we add a new item. So to show you that named range, we'll go to formulas, Name Manager, we just get out of there first of all. We go to Name Manager and we're looking for Action. Here it is here. That's the name range. We create that every time we add a new product. So let's go back to our interface sheet. In here we're looking up all of those that are the same as F19, which is where stock is fine. Here it's all those where we need to reorder now. And then in here, for all those that are out of stock. We're referencing a cell reference here, much smarter than actually typing that into the code. Because if you change your text, it will still work for us. So that pie chart simply is using those six cells of data, these six cells here, as their reference. Okay, so we were to click into that pie chart and choose select data. You can see that it's going to show you there that that's the data for the pie chart. Our chart over here to the right, our customer totals, we can filter any customer, any date. And what we're doing here, because our database doesn't actually have customer names, it has a customer ID, we're looking up the customer ID over here. And there you see the VLOOKUP formula for the named range customer ID that we created earlier. Type in your dates into here, and whatever your dates are, whatever your customer is, and we can then filter that information and our charts change accordingly. So there's the information there for Chick Chick, for instance. If you want to show everything, just remove it out of there and filter between all of those dates. Here is the copy to range down there. And of course, the range that we are referring to is our sales. We're looking at all of our sales per customer which is this range over here for our advanced filter. So that's a brief overview of how I've set up this particular interface. You might not like to do it this way. You might like to customize it a little bit to suit yourself. So let's just go into it in a little bit more depth because here we have some formulas I want you to look at. Now our formulas here, you remember many times we've mentioned that our our headers in advanced filters all need to be the same. And say there's no mistake, with the category description, code, unit price, whatever it is here, 
I've made sure that we're referencing the product sheet to get those headers. So we, they must be the same. And up here with category and description, I'm referencing the information down here. Must be the same. And that's going to guarantee us accurate data for our advanced filter to work. Nice little tip that you might want to use on other advanced filters. Into here we have some data validation, which is just the categories. And that simple data validation, I'll show it to you now. And it's just equals category. That's our range for category. And we'll just pop it over here. Here it is here. There's our categories over in here. So let's have a look at our data validation for our description, which is cascading data validation. We'll have a look at data and validation and we'll click in and have a look at the offset function that we put in here with the match function and the count function. What we're doing is going in, finding all the coats, whatever it is that we've uh, selected as our category, counting them up, matching them and counting them, and then offsetting one column. And that becomes the list, the dependent list that we'll be using. So that filter will work fine. I'll show you the code for that advanced filter in a moment, but why not have a go of recording it yourself? Over in here, we've showed you the formulas. If you want, when this database was empty, that you probably will get an error message in there. If you don't like that, well, you can put an if statement in here to say if this cell is empty, then make put nothing in there. But for now, we'll just leave it as it is. For our advanced filter over to the right, we have we have not linked the data here because I put start date, finish date, customer, and customer ID. In fact, that isn't the criteria block, as I mentioned earlier, that was an error that I've said. The criteria block for this is over here, which is date, date, and customer ID. All right, so forget what I said earlier, it's date, date, and customer ID. So we're picking up in here, if you have a look at it, we're referencing our first date over here, then we're referencing our second date and we're adding in the operators greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. And this is just a direct reference to the customer ID in cell P20. So we can see now how that is going to work for us. And here is, these are linked straight to the sales sheet. Now having said all that, we are in a position now to go in and have a look at the code that we're going to be using. So the best thing to do would be to go to the website if you go to the website, go down and scroll down to see setting up the interface for invoice and inventory. Click on that, number six, and then go down and you'll find, there'll be a video in there and that's the video we're making now. You will find all the formulas that you need to put in. Even some illustrations in here that are lightbox enabled. So clearly you can see how the formulas are going to look in the sheet and in the cells. Then of course, when you get with all the formulas in, we're going to have a look at the dynamic named ranges. And what I didn't mention is that our charting is run off four dynamic named ranges. Here they are here, and they're a special dynamic named range because, and then if you go down a little bit further, here's the code, the code for the sheet and the advanced filter code that you can pop straight in. Where are we going to put that code? Well, I'll show you where the code goes and what the code is. So we'll go back to our workbook, Alt and F11 to open the VBA editor once again. Over in our modules, to the, to the left, we have our filters in here. So the filters that you'd be putting in would be, we have our advanced products, it's not that one. We have the action filter here, advanced action will be one. This is our first one and our totals. There's our second filter there. There's both of the filters. And we, you notice we're running a clear we're clearing the data before we run our filter. So the code for clearing the data, that's on the website as well, and here it is here. Now if you go to the sheet, sheet one, there's a little bit of code you can just put into the sheet on activate to scroll to the top of the code and to set a zoom, because when you go to the interface, you really want it to fit nicely if you can. So with our first chart over here, the data set for that chart, I'll click inside the chart and then we'll just select, select data. And you'll notice it's picking up the sold to date over here and also the category on the left. And that's giving us the total number sold of coats for each of these items that we have listed in here. Now you could add more if you want, but they're the two dynamic named ranges 
that we have put in. Now it's important that we make sure that we use the formulas that I've put up on the website for those. Okay, and then of course when we go over here to this chart and click in and show data once again, select our data, you'll notice that the ranges are again the totals over here and the date. Now that's how I've set it up. What I'm going to show you is how to get the chart, how to actually set up a chart to be able to do that. Alright, I'll just show you how it is we'd set this chart up. So we have our named ranges here, one is category. Let's have a look at that named range first of all, formula, named range. It's called chart cat. Here it is here. That's it there. Okay, there it is. Pull that down so you can see it. And our other one would be chart cat total, which is there over to the right. Now I'll show you how we'd set this chart up to be able to pick up those dynamic named ranges. So to do that, escape out of there, close this up. We're going to highlight our range of data here, our coats, and then we'll highlight our sold to date. Then we're going to go up and we'll choose insert and chart. And we're just a standard bar chart, there it is there. Click into the bar chart, right click and choose select data. Now when you've done that we want to edit the series over here and the horizontal axis. So click into series and click edit. In here you find a range. Leave the name of the sheet and the exclamation mark in. Now you notice here this is chart cat total. I think it is chart. Type it in cat tote. I think it was and click OK. Then over here for editing our horizontal, this was called chart cat, which is our one on the left over there. So just chart cat. Okay. And then okay again. So now we have this set up for us. It's running the other way around. I've chosen a different type of chart. And as you change, this chart will now change and will reflect the new values as well. So if we go into hats, choose hats and filter, you'll notice this is now showing up hats and changing. So that's how you set it up. You must make sure you're leaving a reference to the sheet. Now if you go back in there now, you'll notice it's put in more than a reference to the sheet, it's put in a reference to the workbook. So if we go back in and select series one and edit, you'll notice now it's actually giving us a reference to the workbook as well as the dynamic named range. So that's how you do it. I just thought I'd give you a quick tip there because it's not all that easy. And that's how we'd set up the interface sheet. So this is Trev. Thank you very much for listening to these tutorials. I hope they're benefiting you. I think this is a really awesome invoice and stock management program that you can use to customise, take features from, to work on your own applications. Bye for now.